<clears throat> so we did the spring concerts of rubber bands by Gustav and me. So the purpose of this was to find the spring concerts of different rubber bands at various masses and lengths and how that related with the distance traveled as we shot them into the air. This is the equipment we used and uh, five different rubber bands, different lengths and uh, sizes. Uh, we used camera to videotape us shooting the rubber bands up uh, off of a meter stick and we used a computer with Logger Pro to analyze the videos. And then, so we did two experiments. The first one was we got the the meter stick and we measured the length of the rubber bands and then we put the meter stick perfect normal to the ground and then let it hang off the side and then we Luke would stretch it and yell the distance it was at so the length final <coughs> and then I would record as he let it go and then we would use video analysis to find the height it traveled and then the second experiment we did was we used a force sensor and we recorded it's just force when it's just hanging, so that was this MG. And then we also stretched it, fixed the points to find its spring constant that way, so that we could use that for error analysis. So this is a picture of us taking the air. So Luke was sitting there, and he would, he would shout out the rubber band, and this one was the green one. So he'd shout out green, and then he'd shout out the distance he pulled it so it would be like 50 centimeters and then using that we did video analysis. So our <coughs> derivation. So we had to use the potential, we used energy to find its spring constant and so we used the potential energy and the kinetic energy and we knew at the bottom of the meter stick before we shot up the potential energy would have all of its energy so we set that equal to like we, use spring, we use spring potential yeah. energy and set that equal to uh, gravitational potential energy. Yeah. Kinetic. And then at the, the very top of its flight, the velocity would be zero, so there'd be no spring, uh, no kinetic energy. All this uh, spring potential energy converted to gravitational. Yeah. So those two, those two energies at the very top and at the bottom would be equal, and then using Using the equation, we found it algebraically right there. This was our data. So the green one was the longest one, 35 centimeters. And it also had the most, the most mass. And so the ideal K was the one we used with the force sensor. And we set that equal to our calculated K through the video analysis. So this is our graph of our, the height shot up over the distance stretched squared, because in the equation the distance squared. So each color is the rubber band, like the pink is pink, green, green. And, and then these two, fat and skinny, we have to make blue and brown even though they were both yellow. No, the pink one, it was, it's so different because it had the highest spring constant, and so it went the furthest. The lowest spring constant. The one went the furthest compared to uh, how far it was stretched. So this was our error. We had, as you can tell, we had a lot of error because there was a lot of sources of errors. Like, uh, one was air resistance and air friction and causing that to letting that uh, the rubber band lose some of its energy into heat as it was traveling up, so that was reducing its height. Another was um, our video analysis because you can't perfectly get the rubber band straight up and down so because it has to be moved off to the side so it stay on the rubber band. So the angle it was shot at wasn't perfectly straight it was off to the, like off to the side, meaning there was a reduced in height again, and uh, 
Uh, yeah, and then the measurements. Because the rubber bands have rounded sides, you can't like perfectly measure the actual length of it and the actual length of a stretch because it would be very hard. So you, you have, we just have to fold it and then just, not guess, but like become like get, educated. I guess, I guess. Yeah, we have to guess. <laughs> so we predicted that the the longer and the heavier rubber bands would have the smallest spring constants and shoot up the highest, but we were wrong. This is in order of the the heaviest and light to the lightest, like the heaviest and the longest to the lightest, and um, yeah, like we said, the the pink one had the the smallest spring constant. And uh, the orange one had the highest, and we don't know why. Well, we can guess that it was because, like the the skinny one and the pink one were so thin, like thin compared to the orange and the green, that there was less area getting affected by the by air resistance. And then it also because for the green one it was so long that the distances we stretched it had like very, very little effect on it compared to its the force that the thing had. Thank you. <laughs> Questions for these guys? Uh, were the bands the same material or did you just... Yeah, they were, they were the same material. I, they're, all, they're all broken. <laughs> They're actually all in my backpack still. I think I'm supposed to return it to Dr. Schuster. But... Give me my rubber bands back. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, they're, they're all the same material. They're just varying in length. And then we chose different colors to make it easier, like to see in the in the graph or in the the video. And yeah, they're some are like skinny and some are a little fatter and that it caused their masses to be different. Well, they, they just happened to be different colors. Yeah. Well, yeah. But let's just say we did that on purpose. Say that. Any other questions? Any other questions? Question. Thank you, guys.